Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today's video is going to be a brief moment to kind of nerd out a little bit. A little bit more in depth than usual on the hardware side. So right now, the Qualcomm Snapdragon, Snapdragon Summit is going on. So they can announce a new Snapdragon chip for this year. What does that mean? That means we're getting a brand new flagship processor or system on a chip for all the phones next year for the big flagship. So this year was the Snapdragon 888, last year was the 865, 865 plus, before that the 855. They have moved away from this. No longer are they using these numbers. I mean, going back as far as like the 808, the 8, 810, the 811, the 820, there's been so many using these numbers for a long time. It is now going to be called the Gen 1. Whatever, I guess now is the time to change. Um, I, whatever. I don't know how they came up with the nomenclature, but whatever. They're going with the Snapdragon Gen 1. There's some really exciting stuff, though. So this is their first 4 nanometer processor. So when they talk about nanometers, they talk about thickness, how thick the little processor is, and that matters a lot because the thinner the processor, the more power you get for the less amount of energy. That's a great thing. You get all that electricity bouncing around in there. It has a smaller space to bounce around and process, so it draws less power and it creates less heat. These are great things. There are going to be eight cores. It's an eight-core processor. There's going to be one primary core clocked at three gigahertz. Then you're going to get three performance cores locked in at 2.5 gigahertz, and you're going to get four efficiency cores locked in at 1.8 gigahertz. So what they're saying is this processor is supposed to get 20% better performance than the Snapdragon 888 while drawing 30% less energy. So that means you're going to get less heat, you're going to get more power and better performance. That's great. And that's very reassuring from a numbers perspective because we've had nothing but problems over the last year with the Snapdragon 888. It is a power hungry chip. It's a very great chip. It's very, very powerful. It's very, very good at what it does, but you got to keep feeding it battery and it's just killing battery life on phones like really, really bad. So yes, three gigahertz primary core, the three 2.5s, and then the four efficiency cores at 1.8 gigahertz. So I think that's respectable. I think that's fine. I'm interested in this four nanometer technology they've got. Also debuting is their new modem. It's the X65 modem. Going to have your sub six, your ultra wireless, ultra wideband, all that good stuff. It's going to be the best Qualcomm modem ever made. You know, just like Apple does every year. It's the fastest processor. It's the fastest ever on a Snapdragon. It's the fastest ever modem on the Snapdragon. So looking forward to that. Also some improvements on Wi-Fi. It's also going to have Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E. And you're going to have something that's really neat. Here, here's the thing. Whenever it talk, you talk about these chips, these they have maximum potentials that they can, they can support. So this one will be able to allow someone to record 8K video, 30 frames per second HDR. But the camera and the phone has to support it. So just like we saw this last year with the Snapdragon 888, and then you go look at like a Xiaomi phone or a OnePlus phone and the front facing camera is like 1080p at 30 frames per second. These processors create the platform and they have the maximums, but very few phones actually hit the maximum. So that's one thing just to caution there. That comes down to individual hardware and specs from each manufacturer. See, the system on a chip is the processor. It runs everything. And this is kind of like the engine in a stock car. And then you get the stock cars throughout the year. You get the Samsung that comes out first. And then you get, we used to get the LG. We get the OnePlus. We get the Pixel. They're all running the same hardware, but they're doing things a little bit differently. Well, I mean, Pixel's got their Tensor chip now. But if you look at Qualcomm, their track record in the past, typically you get the, the new one that comes out at the beginning of the year. So we'll have the Gen 1. I don't know if we're going to have a Plus model later on in the year. We kind of skipped that this year. There was rumor of an 888 Plus or 888 Pro, whatever they're going to call it. I don't know that it actually made it in a phone, but I think they were working on it. And it was mostly just to kind of clean things up and give it a more stable core and a less, you know, less battery draw. I think it was just going to kind of tweak a couple of things because the 888, very, very well known for drawing a lot of power, creating a lot of heat. And basically each phone that used it needed some sort of heat mitigation to lower that and keep it from being throttled quickly because of the heat and be, from just draining too much battery. So four nanometers, Great on the speed department. It's going to have a new GPU. They're saying the new GPU is also going to be up 25% faster, 25-30% faster. Also draw less power. And in addition to that, new AI stuff. It's going to be processing AI at four times faster than the Snapdragon 888. This isn't four times faster than like two or three years ago. This is four times faster than the already very good AI performance chip, the Snapdragon 888, which was already good at AI stuff. So now it's going to be four times faster in computing AI stuff. 
and use 1.7 less times energy to do it. So all around, when you look at what is coming out of this Snapdragon Summit, what's coming with this new Gen 1 Snapdragon chip, it gets me excited. I mean, I, I like to talk numbers. I like to talk chips. I like to talk silicon. And this is one of those things where I've been hoping and praying that for 2022 that we would get a better chip that will maximize battery but give you all the features that you want and not make you sacrifice. Because if you look at the S21 Ultra, I had, I had nothing but problems with the battery. I would be able to kill it in four and a half hours. You looked at the OnePlus 9 Pro. Yeah, I could kill it in about four and a half or five hours too, but at least it could recharge in about 50 minutes. And then you look at the Pixel. I mean, I'm not getting more than like peak six hour screen on time out of any Android flagship phone this year. But then you look what you get with the Apple world and you can, I mean, I'm pulling a 10 hour screen on time with adaptive brightness. So there, there's still some room for Android to catch up using Qualcomm, using Tensor, using the Exynos. We're still waiting on the Exynos chip. There's been no word on it, but of course we've got the Tensor chip. Everybody seems to be pretty excited about that is enjoying what it's doing for the Google device. That's only going to get better and better over time. And then we get the Snapdragon chip that's going to go in the mainstream like Samsung here in the U.S., although their Exynos chip will be in there internationally. So it's promising. I hope they don't raise the prices too much. I'm curious about availability just because we all know availability has been a strong topic. It's been a big issue over the last year and a half. Will they be able to get enough silicon? Will they have enough manufacturing space? Will they have enough people that can assemble these things? I don't know how that's going to impact the supply chain and how things are going to look in 2022. I hope better just because things are so bad now, but we'll see. I'm excited about it. I like what I hear. Anytime I hear more power, less battery, that's a win-win for me. That's a win-win for the consumer. And hopefully they learn some stuff. I felt like the Snapdragon 888 was not a very refined processor. I felt that it was very raw and that it could have been better and more efficient had they refined the processing and the quality control maybe a little bit better. But who knows? We'll see what happens. I like the promise of 20% extra speed, 30% extra speed. I like the promise of about 20, 30% less energy draw. I like the additional machine learning. I like the AI stuff. I'm looking forward to see if we get a phone that has a camera that will actually take advantage of the 8K 30 frames per second HDR. It'll probably be Samsung right out of the gate. I can only imagine that's what they like to do. Uh, it's going to go first in the Xiaomi Mi 12 series phones. So that was also something that was confirmed today on social media. Mi 12 is going to be the first with the, with the Snapdragon Gen 1 in it. So that's going to be exciting. Hopefully I'll get one of those. I worked with Xiaomi this last year for the 11 series and then previously for the 10 series. So I'm hoping to get my hands on one whenever it comes available. That would be great. We'll see how that goes, but I'm going to cross my fingers and I'll talk to them and reach out to my contacts. Definitely I'll be getting the S22, S22 Ultra and basically effectively the Note 22 Ultra because you've seen from the pictures, it looks very boxy. It looks like a Note 10 Plus. It's got a slot for an S Pen and it's going to be rocking in the U.S. at least this new Snapdragon Gen 1. So there leaves a lot to be excited about. I'm curious to see how this impacts availability and pricing and what it actually does when the rubber meets the road, but I like it from a numbers perspective. Four nanometer, newest, latest, and greatest technology, less energy consumption. I think it's a win-win on paper. We're just gonna have to get it in our hands and test it out and see if it actually lines up with reality and what our expectations are based off of these numbers that are coming out of this Snapdragon Summit with the new Gen 1. So that's all I got in this video. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you like this. Hopefully you enjoy hearing about something like a new Snapdragon processor for the phones for 2022. I think this gives us hope. I think this gives us something exciting to look forward to. And I just really hope that they can maximize these chips to their best potential and ultimately scores a win for the consumer with the best that we can get while saving battery, while giving us excellent performance at the top of the stratosphere. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.